The Catholic Bishops' Conference says it will use its pulpit to campaign against political parties which fail to sign the document spelling out the Code of Conduct. Secur uh, Secretary, Secretary General Reverend Father Lazarus Anondi said failure to sign the document will create further tension in the political space. He was reacting to the decision by the NDC not to sign the document. The Secretary General of the Catholic Bishop Conference, Reverend Father Lazarus Anondi, expressed disappointment that the NDC failed to sign the document. He recalled numerous meetings on the need to disband the vigilante group since the Ayawasuba elections last year. He then indicated they will use their pulpit to campaign against the party which has failed to sign the document. Don't be surprised if any party does not demonstrate commitment to ending this. We may have no choice than to use our pulpits to campaign against such parties because because if you encourage this then you are not encouraging democracy you are not trying to help build our country spokesperson the chief imam sheikh karimi yao shaibu was disturbed about the situation and pleaded with the peace council to create another opportunity for the ndc to sign the document all that he has requested contrary to what we would have expected was that there are other stakeholders whose signature need to also be found appended to the document. It gives me, gives me hope. He has also indicated that they are not completely opposed to the content of the document, meaning that they associate with everything that we have in there. General Secretary of the Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Cyril Fayusi, pledged the commitment of the council to get the document implemented. Christian Council of Ghana is committed to the process, is committed to what the National Peace Council had done up to this point, and we will continue to support MPC to take this process to its final conclusion. Both the NCCE and the Ghana Police Service also showed their willingness to get dictates for the documents implemented. Whilst we remain committed to the process, we can only hope that the political parties will act in good faith and will ensure that at some point in time, we must have this roadmap and the code of conduct duly assented to, or assented, sorry, assented to by all, all parties to this um, discourse. The Ghana Police Service, in line with its core mandate of maintaining law and order in our country, uh, shall definitely enforce all laws of the country, including the Vigilantism and Related Offences Act. Now on the same issue, we are going to speak to Most Reverend Professor Kweku Asante. He's the chairman of the Peace Council Ghana. Good evening, sir, and thank you for your time on TV3. Thank you. Right, so the, we understand the NDC refused to sign the Code of Conduct. And uh, what could have gone wrong? And is there a second chance to bring them on board? Well, the NDC gave their reasons for their inability to sign, and the reason is simply this. Um, according to them, the roadmap indicates 22 things that are expected of stakeholders, and of the 22 things that list, we listed, four only applies to the political parties. And in the first place, let me make it clear that they had no problems with the document. You know, they, they think that the document represents what was discussed and everything was fine for them. But they think that the, the other stakeholders should also have been invited to append their signature to the document. Because they think that if the two parties alone sign the document, it will mean that they are the only ones who will be responsible in terms of um, ensuring um, the fulfillment of the roadmap. 
And so we didn't have any difficulty with that. The NPP was ready to sign, they signed. And we felt, yes, we will contact the stake, uh, stakeholders for them also to sign so that the NDC will have the opportunity to sign too. That was the understanding. But just this evening, you know, a few minutes ago, I received um, a soft copy of a letter purported to be um, the, from the NDC, from the Secretary Kakai Samoa, uh, to me. And the contents of the letter indicated that they felt that certain things should have been in the document. One, the Amy Schultz report and the recommendations that were made, and, you know, the the fact that it was said that certain people should be dealt with, you know, should be um, corporate, should be um, given the necessary punitive measures that they deserve. We have not brought about all these things, and I'm, I'm sure that they, had, uh, they were also referring to the, even though it was not mentioned, the white paper that seemed to exonerate certain people. But you see, that was not part of the things that we discussed, together with all of them. The document has been in the hands. This is not an imposition. In fact, the roadmap and the code of conduct are things that really came out from the discussions. And, you know, we met five times, and in the five times we issued three communiques, the roadmap, the code of conduct was drawn on the basis of these deliverables, the communiques that we all accepted. But I think they have difficulty because they think those things have not been included. Well, we will see the stakeholders, and the stakeholders, we have no difficulty. I mean, you already played what some of them said, NCC, the police, and all the others are prepared because they were there when we finalized the documents. So appending signature to the code of conduct will not be difficult for any of them. And I want to believe that it will not be difficult for the NDC since they had no qualms with the, with the documents. The other things that they have raised, um, it's something that was not part of the discussion. They are now bringing that in. You know, we talked about the Emily Shorts thing, and that's why we came up with a code of conduct and the, and the roadmap, things that could be done to ensure that, you know, what happened at Ayawaso doesn't happen again. And also, that would enable us go by the Act 999 mm. um, to ensure that vigilantism is removed from our body politic. But okay, okay, so, so Reverend, let, let, me, let me ask you one more question. Why were those stakeholders not included? The reason why NDC disagreed on signing the document. Was this an oversight? Or you will accept their suggestion and bring those stakeholders on board? I made it clear to you that it has never been part of the discussion so far. What we brought is what was discussed in all the meetings that we had. This is, this is an after thing that they, they are you know, bringing it in right from the word go. So as far as I am concerned, there is no... We have not left anything out on the all basis right. of what was agreed on and what was discussed. It's just that they, they have difficulty, you know, because they think that these things should have been part of it. But I, my position and the position of the MPC is that, you know, you begin with one before you go to two. We do not assume that simply by signing this we would have solved all the problems. Okay, sir. We're grateful. That's the most reverend Professor Kweku Asante. He is the chairman of the National Peace Council. Thank you for speaking to us on News 360.